All right, guys, I'm back for more Assassin's Creed 4. I love mortars in this game. Yep.
is my prize. Thought I was already anonymous. I destroyed all the ah, fucking my ships. Have been busy, I see. Lawrence Prince's blood. Useless now. Woods Rogers, Ben Hornigold, even Torres himself. I, I guess, because it took Small crashing into the uh, ally ship for it to even register that I was anonymous. I need to know what it is. To what end, eh? Will you sell it from under my nose? Or work with me and use it to bolster our game? Whatever improves my lot in life. How ridiculous. A merry life and a short one, that's my motto. It's all the optimism I can muster. All right, Captain Kenway. You've earned a look. Oh yeah, uh, the reason I brought up Iron Man 3, I completely forgot, is because they tried to explain why in the Avengers they all seem like they had communicators but you couldn't see them. And then they just like... Uh, what was it? It was inconsistently done. <laughs> like they established like Tony has a... Uh, Tony Stark has a uh, communicator in his ear but you can't ever see it unless it like gets dislodged from his ear. <laughs> Yeah, but it's just like, you, you should really have a prop for that. Or like, a line to just hand wave it, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's, like, fine when they have, like, their helmets on. It's just, like... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, they retroactively tried to explain that in Iron Man 3, and it's just hilarious to me. I mean, it kind of drew more attention to it, since I didn't notice it the first time I watched the Avengers until it was pointed out to me, but... <laughs> it's like... Yeah, it's really inconsistently done in Iron Man 3 to explain it. And you never see it entering his ear, either. They cut away when he's putting it back in his ear. <laughs> I was like, what? What? Can you feel it, Addy? We're moments away from the grandest prize of all. I feel nothing but a hot wind in my ears. Oh, Dr. Hot, I want to once started streaming to WWE 2K19. All of us, ten times over. As you wish. Ahoy, <laughs> Roberts. We'll cast anchor and meet ashore. You were followed, Captain Kenway. Four, I wonder. And I've never played a WWE game because I've never been interested. Burn and flay that turncoat. Deal with your old friend in haste, Captain, yeah. before I regret my friend. This is like, wrestling looks just dumb to me. Yes. Well, mostly, Captain, but yes. Think carefully about what you mean to do here. What are you grousing about, Ade? It's Ben Hornigold, come to kill us out there. Aye, and the traitor needs to die. But what then? Can you say with certainty that you deserve the observatory more than he and his Templars? No, I can't, and I don't care to try. But if you've a bad I watched that kid's means, cartoon, tell Mucha Lucha. Does with that Roberts. count? Tell the assassins. <laughs> bring them here, and let them protect <laughs> this place. Aye, I'll bring them here. If they're willing to Also, that Nickelodeon show that didn't last long, El Tigre. That was a decent show. Yeah. 
It, did, it didn't last more than like a season or two, and I'm sad. We're nearing the devil's backbone. You mean so that just like it was inventive. Like the backbone of a beast. I, El Espinazo del Diablo, yeah. Spaniards call it. Oh yeah, I just remembered that was it the Mucha Lucha movie? Was it was that the a series finale for it where for some reason they had Penn and Teller? <laughs> for some reason they just had Penn and Teller and it made no sense. <laughs> Uh, I barely remember it as the thing. Shovel blowing in! Looks like a frigate! Colors are English! Seems to be alone, sir! Fire! Yay! Yay! Working on it! Awaiting order, sir! Fire! Oh, Ingram. Captain, think carefully about what you mean to do here. What are you grousing about, Ade? It's Ben Hornigold come to kill us out there. Aye, and the traitor needs to die. But what then? Can you say with certainty that you deserve the observatory more than he and his Templars? No, I can't, and I don't care to try. But if you've a better idea, by all means, tell me. Forget walking with Roberts. Tell the assassins. Bring them here, and let them protect this place. Aye, I'll bring them here. If they're willing to pay me a good sum for it. We have a hard fight if Hornigal draws us any deeper into this fog. We're nearing the devil's backbone. You mean them crags that look like the backbone of a beast? Aye. Del Diablo, the Spaniards call it. Hostile warship closing! Frigates! Royal Navy! Seems to be alone, sir! We're clear, Captain. I don't really care for optional objectives in this game. Or any Assassin's Creed game. When they introduced those, I was just like, why is this in here? The optional objectives. No. I mean... Yeah, like... Yeah. I hated that. Yeah. 
you know, like, all the, um, optional shit that you do, it only gives you more of a certain token. I I get the reasoning behind it. I I don't like the execution though. Cuz to go back to Nick's example with Spider-Man, it it rewards you for doing the shit in the first place and then it gives you more rewards. Assassin's Creed it really doesn't. It only gives you percentage. It doesn't give you anything you can actually use in the game. Yeah. Which is why I generally uh, ignore objectives unless I know I can get them. Which is n almost never. Yeah. I hope that it's just good. <laughs> uh, DC. I know. I know what the. I know who the main hero is and the main villain. I mean, I know Captain Marvel. <laughs> yep. Or I thought he was, huh? Did they ever explain in, like, supplemental material why there's, like, five kids getting the power of Shazam in the, uh, Flashpoint timeline? I know, but it's just, like... Did they actually... Oh, okay. By your powers combined, I am Captain Polina! Captain Thunder! Do you ever hear that show, OKKO? Okay they have had cameos from a lot of Cartoon Network shows within, like, some of the episodes. Like, there was literally an episode where Captain Planet showed up. <laughs> and, uh, Kwame and... Whoever the hell the third character was. And it's just like, why did you do this? Because you could, that's why. And then they just had the uh, the crossover Nexus, which was a crossover between OKKO, OK the new Ben 10, Steven Universe, 
and Raven from Teen Titans Go is in it as well. So that too. But they and they yeah and they had a bunch of like petrified statues of a lot of the old uh, Cartoon Network show characters that appeared in it. And it's just like cameos, and it's just like, hey, oh my god, I haven't seen the actual episode, but I just know those facts that are in it. I'm just like, oh yeah, they they had the, uh, they had the, uh, the girls from Scooby-Doo and the Ghoul School show up in an episode for some reason. <laughs> I have no idea why, but they did. I guess someone on the writing staff liked that movie. Oh. Uh. Which, not, it's not a bad movie, but it's not one you, you reference in your own cartoon. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the... Oh, yeah, the, uh, the guy who created OKKO is dating Rebecca Sugar, the woman who created Steven Universe. Yeah. If your heart up for it. Truth be told, I was hoping the sea would swallow him up and see the job done for me. Yeah, it's just like... I would just... I love crossover shit like that, but it's just like, it's weird how they do it. Batten yourselves! Fire! Are you fucking kidding me? I almost had that other ship dead. This is just the one thing I don't like about the pirate aspect of this game is the ship combat. When it's like forced upon you. No, I mean like Okay. I mean like it's mainly when I'm when I'm forced to do it. I don't mind the fact that this is a pirate game, but uh, Apples and oranges is what I'll say to that. I know you're just saying, but I'm. This is like you're comparing two very vastly different things. But the thing about the web swinging is it's not really that intrusive, or <laughs> it doesn't feel like it's intrusive to them. I don't know. I'm just saying I play Assassin's Creed to be an assassin, not to be a, not to really be a pirate. <laughs> uh, the thing is, I've already played the first four, so why? Uh, just the fact that I'm get I'm getting butt fucked from both sides. game I play Sea of Thieves.
for impact! Fatten yourselves! I could heal my ship mid combat. That would seriously be great. Fire! <laughs> Fire! Fire! And I also hate the fact that they removed healing items Fire! after like what was it two? Or Brotherhood or some shit. I mean, like, was it after Revelations that they did that? It was probably after Revelations. I don't mind regenerating health. I just love the 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 uh, the ability to choose when I heal. Like. Because I, I like games where there's both, or one or the other, but I prefer to be able to heal myself. That's why I love Spider-Man. I could heal myself whenever the fuck I wanted and just continue on with the combat because it was really, really fluid how you did it. Oh god, I really want New Game Plus for that shit to come out. I know, but I wanted to come out sooner. It was supposed to be a day one thing. But it was promised to us and we didn't have it ready. Colin, that's like... <laughs> Seriously though, they promised it to us day one in a patch, but they didn't have it ready, now it's over a month and a half later. Fire! I already played through the game, that's why I'm waiting for fucking New Game Plus. It, it'd be different if they didn't promise it to us, and then they added it after a while, like Final Fantasy XV did. I know, but I like that game so much I want to play it again, but I don't want to start a new file. you just piss off, you piece of shit? I, I, fuck, dude. Why does there have to be fucking two boat, two ships that I fight right now when I only have to sink one of them? No, fuck that concept. Within the video game. No, that, that I have to fight two fucking ships at once, and yet I only have to sink one of them. Is it only me that just wants to get through a story of the game without having, like, to, like, replay shit more than, like, a couple times when I fail? Because this is, this is just pissing me off. Getting close. Piss off. And detonated it too late. Bram! And dead. Fun. There's Hornigo. Getting close. What song is this? 
Oh. Oh yeah, Christmas music then. Would be more manageable if they weren't taking so much of my ship's goddamn health at once. Should be interesting. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's just gonna be Will Smith as the genie. Just like Robin Williams was Robin Williams as the genie. I mean, they just let Robin Williams go to town with his impressions for that movie. I imagine they'll, they'll have some similar thing with uh, Will Smith for improv. So I'm not exactly sure how good Will Smith is at improv, but he can't be bad. I mean, they're both here, but... Oh yes, they got hit by their own fucking uh, gunpowder barrels. Nice. Is your mic okay, buddy? Is your internet connection? Hi. 
<laughs> I said I don't know how good Will Smith is at improv, but he can't be bad. He's Will Smith. Yes. Yeah. It's like I said, though, the only thing I have with the live-action Disney remakes is essentially they're remaking the original cartoons, but with live-action instead of animation. Which is just like... Yeah... Disney. Yeah, Disney. The only one of their live-action remakes that I've that I know is at least mostly different from the original is uh, Jungle Book. Because they actually chose to go in a different direction than the original movie. I know, like, that's that's what I've heard of it. Unless you're Doug Walker, in which case your 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 uh, your opinion is word of God, so you need to be pissed off at it for some reason. Yeah. That was like one of the last nostalgia critic videos I ever watched because it's just like y you uh... it was mostly Mike Mashad that those allegations were against but yeah I don't yeah and on top of that the way Doug has been writing the Nostalgia Critic ever since, like, 2013 is, like, he doesn't seek to entertain anymore, at least not always. He just has to prove that he's right for some reason, and it's just like, dude, can, can you please just get a life with this? Can you at least go back to being entertaining? He's like, that's the main thing with the Nostalgia Critic years ago, is that it was at least entertaining, even if you didn't agree with Doug's opinions. But... Yeah, that was okay. He's at the very... Yeah. And on top of that, it helped him with his Nostalgia Critic review of The Last Airbender. Because he actually had context for the show. And, uh... It... Yeah. Ironically, though, from what I've read on about the film's uh, production, a lot of the problems weren't Shyamalan's fault, they were the producer's faults. Like, the reason... That's the question. Most likely Shyamalan, but... <laughs> Maybe. But, uh... But I mean, like, in terms of, like, the fact that the script was terrible... Yeah. They're, they're, they're like a mix of Japanese and Korean, from what I can tell. Feudal Japan and Korea. Essentially, yeah. Hey, Ironically, the village, those people were in you it, but the 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 two characters that are through the film from that tribe was not. What the fuck? Getting close. And on top of that, they were written really badly, but. Uh, But yeah, it's just like all the script problems, the casting, some of the casting decisions, I think. Mainly with like Katara and Sokka. Those, uh, those pronunciations were definitely Shyamalan's because he was the director. And it's just like his reasoning is that the names are, those are the proper pronunciations, even though they're made up names in the first place. It's just like... Yeah. It's like calling Goku Sun Wukong in a uh, adaptation of Dragon Ball because, you know, that was the original character he's based on. Wukong. 
That joke in that short was funny. You're not black! Yeah. <laughs> Nega Goku. Ukok. <laughs> and then they just show a picture of Justin Chatwin from that movie. <laughs> I feel bad for Justin Shatwin. He's not a great actor, but he didn't deserve to be in Dragon Ball Evolution. I know! That's why I say he didn't deserve to be in it. I actually didn't mind the live-action Bleach movie, but... Yeah, it's, it's not really that great. I... It's a mixed bag, in my opinion. The The English dubbing is decent, if you ever want to watch that, but... It... It basically adapts the first 20 episodes of the anime. Rukia going off with Aizen and Renji. Yakia, yes. Fuck! Ike! Jesus! I, yeah, I completely, it's just like, I mix that up fucking hard. Jesus Christ. But yeah, it's like, um, they, <laughs> what do you want? I've only seen that arc twice. <laughs> and the most recent was like at the beginning of the year when I got the Blu-rays. Yeah, my brother, yeah, my brother, um, really got into Bleach in the last year. Like, he binged that shit through, like, I think Hulu. There's Hornigo. Getting close. Captain there, too strong! Yeah. Yeah. And now that it's done, they, they don't have to do filler. And and St Studio Peria, which is the animation studio of Bleach, I believe, who also did Naruto, they're pretty good, and they also did Yu Yu Hakusho, I believe. They're really good at adapting an, a manga to being an anime when they don't have to do tons of filler. Because the animation is mostly on point. The, like, the scripts are pretty good in terms of the transitioning from manga to anime in terms of the dialogue and everything. The music is usually really good. Like, they're pretty good at doing, what, at doing that shit when they don't have to do filler. Because none of those people can do filler ever. I have no fucking clue. All in the stunt Stunt job! Let's get moving! Ride the wind! For all this is worth That was... I... Th I get where they pulled that... I get why they pulled that out of their asses, because... Ichigo's... Uh... Sword is technically alive. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Naruto. Your anime adaptation was shit, and I hope they do a recut of it to cut out all that fucking filler. Ironically, there is a fan project to do that. Where they have recut basically every episode that's come out of Naruto and Naruto Shippuden. To be... I mean, well... Uh, like, like it didn't have, it didn't have like, it didn't have like 80 episodes worth of filler to give the manga time to, you know, get along in the storyline. But then, they also threw in a bunch of like, slow pace shit that really just like, slow things down. There's Onigo, getting close. I do not think we can stand against them, sir! We're in close quarters here. Yeah. Carefully don't run us 
That's filler that, that's, yeah, that's filler that's fine, as long as you know the limitations of the characters and, well, strengths and limitations of them, and there's something to actually show from the manga that's mentioned, I don't mind that. If you can, if you can expand on that shit well, that's actually pretty good. That's what I think Toei did well with the original Dragon Ball series, is that they had filler, but it was filler, most of it was filler. That was just expansion upon ideas from the manga. Oh, there was. Yeah. I actually recommend giving it a watch. The filler in the original Dragon Ball series is... Holy shit. It is more... Better than any filler in Z. <laughs> for the most part. Yes, there was. The fact that that series got cut literally in half for Kai. There was filler. Yeah. And also they had Gohan's birthday even though his birthday wasn't supposed to be at that time a year. They had Mercenary Tao coming back, but now he's a fucking cyborg for no reason. Yeah. I mean, like, that's not that bad. The only filler I actually liked from Dragon Ball Z, though, was the Other World Tournament. Because that shit was entertaining. And then it happened. Yeah. You there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because, like, when you're dead in Dragon Ball, apparently, because you don't have. You technically don't have a physical body, you're just a spirit you don't strain your body so you're not limited as much yeah then again, then again, that was a filler explanation. I'm waiting for, like, Toriyama to actually say something on that. Because from, from what Toriyama actually put in the manga and what was adapted into Z is that you die once, you come back as a spirit, and if you have your body and you die again, you basically get thrown out of existence altogether. Because... That's what Goku kept warning Vegeta about when they were fighting Kid Buu on the, the Grand Kai's planet, or Supreme Kai's planet. Yeah. Although, like... Yeah. Yeah, the anime was ahead of the manga, definitely, and the, the production of both were definitely at the same time, rather than, or, uh, uh, yeah, at roughly this, yeah, hence why it's over and the manga's still in the Tournament of Power arc. Yeah, um, who does? Yeah, well, I mean, um, well, I mean, uh, in terms of Jiren, from what I know, uh, 
Toriyama didn't want him to have a personality, and when he saw what the anime staff was doing with him, he told them about that, so they adjusted his personality as they were writing it. So they basically... I think... I think they gave his personality to Topo. I could be wrong, but... They gave his personality to someone. But yeah. Um... Yeah. Who, by the way, they call Top in the dub because his name is supposed to be an anagram of Pot. So they just removed the Po from it. I... I don't... I don't know, like, I don't, I don't mind that being an explanation, I just don't think that that's the explanation they're going with for the dub. <laughs> yeah, they just call him Top, which is fine in my opinion. Some people don't like it because they think Topo's more, uh, grand, I guess, or some shit, but it's just like, I don't mind. It's literally the same name, it's just removing part of it that's part of the Japanese pronunciation of it. Yeah. Oh, uh, man. Japanese dub fans of Dragon Ball are really, really fucking weird sometimes. And then they bring up the fact that they kept the U's in Zamasu and uh, Goasu. It was just like, that's like two different things from what I know of the Japanese language. In the anime dub, it is Zamasu and Goasu, but in the Viz translation, they removed the U. So it's really up to how, however you prefer to say their names. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's just like, it's fine with either, but... Eh. Some people just don't like it, I guess. The Because they say it's inconsistent, but it's really not. <laughs> Considering they have Steve Simmons as their translator for Dragon Ball, I'm going to say it's not. Oh, man, that could have used some better execution for everything. <laughs> the main thing I don't... Yeah, uh, the only thing I don't... The one thing I seriously don't like about it. The fact that they devalue Trunks as a character. Trunks does fucking nothing, and anything he does, it automatically just gets, like, lessened. And it was used mostly for hype, because most of it came at the end of episodes that he, w that, that he was in. You know? He gets, he gets mad, gets a blue aura to his Super Saiyan form for Super Saiyan Rage. Oh, that that's at the end of an episode? Okay, we're going to see this in the next episode. Uh, next episode, nope, he gets fucking curb stomped. <laughs> oh. Well, the manga and anime are written by different people and executed differently as a result, so... Yeah. Ironically, though, in the Tournament of Power, from what I know, I think the anime took some inspiration from the manga for having Goku go just Super Saiyan God rather than Super Saiyan Blue. Yeah. In, in the manga. Which was... Which... Yeah, which I thought was actually very inventive for the reason that Toriotaro gave for that. Like, that was actually pretty inventive. For the... Yeah, and for the first... For the first... Yeah, for the first time in anything in terms of the anime, they are finally showing Vegeta as a Super Saiyan God, apparently within the Broly movie, which is gonna be good. Because we have not seen him as that. For some reason, not even Xenoverse or Xenoverse 2 showed him as that. Which, I don't get whatsoever. It's like, why not? Although, apparently it was established that he got it on his own, which doesn't make any sense, considering the lore behind the form. I know this bastard, and I've seen what he can do. Ugh. Yeah, that's that's what I always assumed cuz it's just like but if a killer's heart now uh, with nothing but metal to show for all your blunders comes I better than maybe you yeah the heart of a traitor who thinks himself better than his mates i and proven true 
What have you done since Nassau? Yeah, Nassau? go on. Oh, oh man. And mayhem. You threw in with the very kind we once hated. No. Uh, yeah, fucking Toriyama. These Templars are different. I wish. You could Why do that. Goku and Vegeta have to constantly be the main characters present, of course. every arc? They'll find you're the only one walking it. Yeah. With the gallows. <laughs> I mean, his character arc was complete, so there's really no place that they can go with him. Yeah. It may be. So there's really no place else to go with him. But now the world has one less snake in it. Yes. And that's enough <laughs> for me. If he eventually becomes a god of destruction, that would just be great. Which I... Yeah. Alright guys, I'm going to pause here and continue in the next one.